A sample chapter from Carlology. The day I had a brain scan. I think the brain is the weirdest thing in the body. It's probably the ugliest thing as well. I don't feel bad about saying that, because it's my brain that came up with it. It doesn't like the look of itself, to the point that it tells me not to eat anything that looks like a brain either. I don't like cauliflower, because that's kind of brain looking. And I've always got rid of the walnut off the top of a walnut whip before eating it. I've wondered if I'm in charge of the brain, or if the brain is in charge of me. After a bit of thought and people watching, I came to the conclusion that it's the brain that's in charge. It came to me when I saw some people getting on the push bikes. The first thing they did was put on a bike helmet, which to me is a sign that the brain is just looking after itself. It doesn't tell you to look after your knees or your elbows by wearing pads, it just tells you to look after it. So that's why I think the brain is in charge. Mind you, it wants me to think that, doesn't it? An odd thing about my brain, it isn't always interested in the same things as me. I can enjoy reading about something, but then have problems remembering any of it. It's like it's not interested. So I'd, I'd normally tell my girlfriend, Suzanne, about it as soon as possible, so that she can remember it for me. Then, if my brain blanks it out, I just ask her what the amazing thing was that I told her. I use her brain a bit like a, a backup drive that you have for a computer. Anyway, I didn't do that well in my exams at school, so I decided to take a mentor test to see if my brain had got any better with age. The test took place in a university building in London at 6.30pm. This worried me a bit, because my brain slows down as the day goes on. It's normally brilliant around 8.15am till about 9.45am. After that, it's, it's all downhill. There was me and 12 others taking the test. Odd bunch of people they were, they all seemed to know each other. I heard two of them talking about recent science news that surgeons had been able to keep a heartbeat in, even though it wasn't connected to a body. I thought this was a waste of heartbeats and energy, to be honest. It's, it's like going out and leaving the TV on. We're constantly being told to save energy, and yet here's surgeons leaving heartbeats pumping. Everyone sat down, ready to take the mentor test. I took the last seat that was available. The other people had all brought lots of pencils and had their own stopwatches. I had to borrow a pen from the mentor rep. This caused the others to tut. The test began. I'll be honest with you, it was tough, but the questions were multiple choice, so I went with my gut feeling at first. After a while, though, even my gut was starting to pass on a couple of the questions. The test was broken into three papers, so we had a break between each one. The other people seemed quite calm with it all and chatted with each other in the breaks. One woman was even sat there doing a Sudoku. She was that relaxed. She couldn't get enough. But I think this is because people love to be tested these days. Every time I put the telly on now, there's someone asking me a question on who wants to be a millionaire or eggheads or the weakest link. Even my auntie Nora tried to grow a bonsai plant recently just because she'd heard Alan Titchmarsh say that they were hard to grow. Everyone seems to like a challenge. Whereas my brain just prefers the easy life. The really odd thing was, None of the people taking the test ever seemed to laugh, which made me wonder if intelligent people need laughter. I thought about this on the way home. Maybe the brain doesn't really like laughing. Mad people who have faults with the brain laugh a lot, and babies whose brains haven't grown properly like a good laugh, but it seems that normal brains don't really like laughing. I got my mental results a few weeks later. They were a joke. But again, my brain didn't laugh. I decided for this chapter that it would be good to have a picture of my brain because at the end of the day it's that that's come up with what I'm telling you. I found a lad on the internet who said he could get his hands on an MRI scanning machine and said he'd be able to get me some good shots of my brain. I like to think about my brain a lot, which proves it also loves itself as well as being in charge, but I can't get my head around how the brain was created. I can grasp how humans might have developed from fish over time, but it's the brain bit that gets me. See, scientists always use the evolution argument when they don't know how things have grown an extra leg or learned to fly, but I don't understand how the brain could evolve. Evolve from what? You see, I have this theory that the brain might have come from another planet where brains ruled. A planet where there was no atmosphere and the brains just floated around thinking about stuff all day. They quickly became advanced because of the amount of thinking being done, and then somehow they came to planet Earth but found that they were useless because they couldn't move about by floating anymore. So one of the brainier ones got into a monkey's head, and 
the rest is history. Like I say, it's just a theory. Six days after emailing the lad about the brain scan, there I was in a bunker, deep below a London university, not far from where I took the mentor test, with Hugo and Joe and a million pound camera. Joe explained how it worked. I, I pretended I understood. I don't have a clue what he was going on about. If he'd have taken a picture of what my brain was doing at that point, he would have seen it overheating. I could tell that Joe loved that machine, though. He said stuff like, There's plenty of elbow room, more than 27 inches from side to side for a more comfortable shoulder, chest and upper body scan. True comfort and quality. Some patients drift off to sleep, it's so comfortable, he said. If the medical profession doesn't work out for Joe, he could easily get a job on QVC flogging these scanning machines. I started to feel a bit nervous about coming face to face with my brain. It was either that, or it was my brain that felt nervous about seeing it. I get like this whenever I have any sort of medical test, as doctors always seem to find something, don't they? That's what doctors do. They're like archaeologists who just keep digging until they hit bone, or car mechanics who always find something that needs replacing. So I prefer just to leave it for as long as possible before having to have a checkup, really. The last time I went to the doctor's was because Suzanne told me to get a wart checked. I went to the walking clinic in Soho and explained at the reception that I had a wart that my girlfriend was worried about. They sent me through to the nurse who read on the note that I had a wart and without even making eye contact she asked me to drop my pants. She was sat down, I was stood up. She stared at me bits for a, a few moments and did that thing that people with glasses do where they squint and then look over the top of the glasses as, as if she was studying a piece of art. I'm having problems locating it, she said. It's here on the side of my face. Oh, okay, pull your pants up. She explained that most cases of warts in the Soho clinic were of a sexual nature. Anyway, she gave me some cream to put on it and the wart fell off within a week, which, to be honest, made me glad that the wart wasn't on my knob. I suppose I should have queried her asking me to drop my pants, but I don't like questioning doctors, as I don't want to annoy them. Another reason I get nervous is because I hear too much about what can go wrong with the body. That's why I think having knowledge can be a bad thing, it can worry you. A mate's mate told me how someone he knew banged his head in a car crash. He survived it, he had no loss of memory or anything, but his brain went gay. Which is weird, because I've heard that banging your head makes you lose calories. And as most gays are seen knocking about look like fitness freaks, their gayness might just be due to Ed banging the calories away. Again, just a theory. There was another story as well that I heard about, about this woman who had alien hand syndrome. This is where people with epilepsy have two halves of the brain separated to stop seizures happening. The woman who had this alien hand thing could still feel things with her hands, but she couldn't control one of them, so it ended up doing things of its own accord. Apparently she was a smoker, but the weird hand wasn't that happy with this, and used to grab the cigs from her mouth and throw them away before a normal hand could light them. She said it's the most annoying thing that could happen to anyone. But after thinking about it, I reckon having a leg that walked where you didn't want to go would be more annoying. As Joe did the final checks on the scanner, he told me how he had his eye on this new model of scanner called the fMRI. This new machine can actually see your thoughts take place and can show what thoughts go on where in your brain, whereas I was just having the normal MRI scan. I was glad about this, as I think it would be weird them knowing what was going on in my head. I had a similar experience when I worked at a recording studio where I made cassettes. This mind-reading woman had had some audio tapes made of her sort of explaining how to mind-read, and she turned up to collect them with a pet dog. But I hadn't finished doing them, so she asked if she could wait. I was about to think how much of a pain in the arse she was for not just popping back in ten minutes when I thought, hang on, I can't do that, because she'll know what I was thinking. So I came up with a quick plan. I decided to think about dog food and sort of being happy running up and down a beach after a ball so that she would think she was picking up thoughts from a pet dog. Stressful day's work, that was. Is there any danger involved? I asked Joe. He said no, but then asked me to sign a consent form. Before I knew it, I was being slid into the machine like a Sunday joint being popped into an oven. I had a few little panic attacks whilst I was inside. I don't really like tight spaces or that feeling of being trapped. I can't even use sleeping bags because of that trap feeling, and this was worse. I tried to relax, but the noise from the machine was really loud. It said earlier that people sometimes nod off whilst inside. I don't know how, though. I felt like a sock in a washing machine. I think most people's brains are like mine, but then you get the odd one that changes the world. 
you've got people who can tell you amazing things like you know they can tell you where dinosaurs walked on earth and what they had for the last meal 65 million years ago and yet the donut who works at the service company in charge of our flat can't even tell me if our windows are going to get cleaned in the next month I think there are more idiots in the world than bright ones, but it's, it's the good ones that make a difference. I still can't explain how gravity works, and yet Isaac Newton worked it out years ago. He came up with loads of other intelligent stuff as well, but everyone remembers the gravity theory because he came up with it while sat under a tree and an apple fell on his head. But fancy sitting under a tree that has apples falling off it. It just goes to show he might have been good with maths, but he, he had no common sense. Same goes for Archimedes. He came up with loads of theories, but he's mainly known for running down the street naked shouting Eureka after coming up with a good idea in the bath. I think it's harder to come up with ideas and solutions now. If these people were around today, they'd struggle. Newton wouldn't be allowed to sit under an apple tree because there'd probably be a keep off the grass sign or apple trees would have fences around them to stop people nicking the apples. And Archimedes wouldn't have a bath due to a water shortage. He'd probably be advised to take a shower because it's better for the environment. And as for running down the street naked, well, it'd be banged up for that. Things have changed. Fourteen minutes later, the scan was over. Joe came in and pulled me out of the machine and removed the cage from around my head. I felt like a magician's assistant who had just been cut in half and then put back together again. Hugo brought up the images of my brain on his computer. It was weird to see it. It was like seeing someone you've spoken to a lot on the phone but never met face to face. I knew what he thought about stuff, but I'd never seen it. I thought it was quite a good looking brain really, but maybe I thought this because it belongs to me. It's like when people have a baby scan and the owners think it's beautiful when to other people it just looks like a frog. Hugo told me it's important to keep the brain healthy by keeping it active and eating well. Omega-3 fats are good for the brain, he said. When I got home I looked online to see which foods contain this stuff. I found that it's in walnuts. My brain doesn't like walnuts. A sample chapter from Carlology. The new book from Carl Pilkington, out now.